Now, a lot of people ask, what's the difference between a buffalo and a bison? Well, the difference is just the name, but technically buffalo are not really native to North America. Buffalo are the animals of like Southern Asia, think water buffalo. Here in North America, we have bison, but over time the name buffalo has kind of stuck. So if you say buffalo, you say bison, people pretty much know what you're talking about. But technically speaking, these are bison bison. That's the genus and species name. Now, bison are related to buffalo and other bovines like cows. They actually migrated into North America from Eurasia around 220,000 years ago. So during that time, the world was in an ice age and there was a land bridge between Eurasia and Alaska. And like many animals, those early bison, a precursor to the bison we have today, migrated across the land bridge into North America, migrating further and further down into the heart of the continent. Now those ice age conditions led to selective pressures that promoted the growth of larger bodies, hairier animals. And that's why during the ice age, we had things like woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, dire wolves, these incredible animals that we don't really have today. And during that time, the bison became what's known as bison latifrons, an even bigger version of the bison than we have today. Their hump stood about nine feet tall and their horns spread from tip to tip about six feet across. It was a huge, massive animal. But by around 10,000 years ago, the climate was changing. It was warming and those large bodies were not as necessary. Now, it's still heavily debated today why this happened, but around 10,000 years ago, a mass extinction occurred in North America. Things like the woolly mammoths, the ground sloths, and the dire wolves, they all went extinct. But the bison bison were able to survive, and they actually expanded as other grazing animals like the mammoths disappear. The bison moved in to fill that gap. By the time of the arrival of the Europeans in the 17th century, bison spread from coast to coast across the entire continent. Now at that time, many Native American people relied on the bison as a staple food source. They also used the hides for things like clothing and shelter, and they would use all the different parts of the bison as they hunted them. Some tribes, like the Lakota and the Comanche, took the arrival of the Europeans and the introduction of horses and became even better bison hunters. With the horse, they were able to ride from place to place, following the herds around as they moved across the continent. Now, by the 19th century, an explosion of European migration occurred. And as more and more pioneers were traveling across the continent, they also used the bison as a food source. But many of the people started market hunting, hunting the bison to sell to meat and other markets across the country. Now, sometimes that hunting led to much overkilling. You kill a bunch of bison, you sell the meat you can, the rest of it goes bad and rots. Also, the pioneers and the Native Americans were at odds with one another. They were in a big conflict, right? So the Native Americans used the bison so heavily that the pioneers thought kind of a way that they could exterminate the native population was by exterminating their food source. So because of market hunting and terrible policies, the once massive herds of bison, we're talking like 10 million animals, within 100 years, they had almost gone completely extinct. And by the end of the 19th century, we only had a handful of these animals left around. That's when conservationists like Theodore Roosevelt started to realize if we didn't do something, these animals would go completely extinct. So around 1905, Roosevelt and a few of his contemporaries started what's known as the Bison Society. And they started to pressure the government to preserve and conserve what few bison we had left. So within about 10 years or so, they had gotten together enough funding, gotten together enough animals, and they started managing a herd in South Dakota around Wind Cave National Park. Around the same time, another man by the name of Charles Buffalo Jones 
he had been a bison hunter throughout the 1800s, and he actually contributed to their downfall. But what Buffalo Jones realized was that conservation was important. So Buffalo Jones took his hunting and tracking skills and went around collecting as many buffalo and bison that he could. Now he rounded them up and started ranching with the bison on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. By about the 1940s, the state of Arizona bought a handful of those bison off of Buffalo Jones and they moved them here, east of Flagstaff, to the Raymond Wildlife Ranch and area. Like bovines, cows, bison are grazing animals. So they rely on things like the grass and the brush here on the plains to survive. Now grass is very tough and it's actually hard to digest. Humans, we can't eat and survive off of grass, but bovine and other grazing animals have actually four chambers of stomachs. So they will eat the grass, chew on it, digest it for a little bit, and then kind of cough it back up and chew the cud, digest it, cough it back up, so on and so forth, until it goes through all four chambers of their stomach. And that way, ruminants have really taken advantage of what is one of the largest resources in North America, the grass of the Great Plains or the high desert where we are today. So you can see the bison poop here. It looks pretty much just like cow poop. Cows are also eating the same thing, grasses. We just can tell it's bison poop because it's a lot bigger and this is a bison refuge. We don't wanna to get too close to these bison. Being the largest land mammals in North America, they don't really have very many natural predators outside of things like wolves. And to fend off the wolves, bison will actually confront them and possibly fight them. So they have these large heads, large shoulders, large bodies, they can do a lot of damage. So for us, we're gonna get as close as we can to keep them comfortable, but I don't wanna go right up to these bison and invade their space because they are much more imposing than I am. One of the most distinctive physical features of the bison is this large hump on their shoulders. And what that is, is an attachment point for large neck muscles. So those bison rely on the grasses to graze and eat and survive off of. During the winter time, heavy snowstorms across North America can cover these grasses and resources with inches or feet of snow. That large neck and large head of the bison is actually like a big snow plow. They will swing their head back and forth from that hump and they'll plow through the snow to get at the grass underneath and they can survive. So even in the winter time, bison are perfectly happy out on the plains. They'll plow through the snow and their fur will actually get thicker and so thick to the point where even their own body heat won't melt the snow on the outside of the fur. That's how insulated they are. So again, they're a remnant of the Pleistocene, of the Ice Age. They evolved during this time of colder climates and harsher conditions. And today in North America, those adaptations are still at work. Like cows and other bovines, bison have horns. And what a horn is, there's a bony core, but it's mostly keratin growing away from that core. So the same stuff that our hair and fingernails are made out of. But that keratin is much harder in the horns and it grows throughout the bison's life. So that's another kind of protective adaptation they have. If they're threatened, that big head, those sharp horns, that's all a natural weapon that the bison can use to defend themselves. Looking back, it's incredible to think about how America's largest land mammal today is just a small cousin of the megafauna that once existed here during the Ice Age. It's also amazing to think about the fact that for thousands of years, millions of these animals roamed across the plains of North America. But in less than 100 years, we humans were able to pretty much drive them to the point of extinction. But then again, it's also amazing to think about how some humans, like Theodore Roosevelt, like Buffalo Jones, like the Native Americans, they appreciated the bison. And a hundred years ago, those conservation efforts that were done to preserve what few bison we had left have led to an expansion of the population. They're still in danger today, but they're doing much better than they were doing just over a hundred years ago.